So what I want to focus on today is a project we've been working on for about the last year and a half in my lab. And this is creating biomimetic microfluidic networks. So a little motivation of why we want to do this kind of work is if you look at the drug development pipeline, it's extremely expensive and extremely inefficient, right? So if you think about trying to develop, say, a new cancer drug, you'll start off with approximately 10,000 components, right? Do some preliminary screening in both uh, cells and animals. And out of that, you'll narrow it down to about 10 components that you actually then will go into human trials with. Out of those 10, maybe one will succeed. So if you imagine only 10% or so of the drugs that we test in humans actually make it to the clinic. Right? And so this is extremely inefficient, very expensive, and takes about 14 years, right, with an average cost of around $2.5 billion. So like I said, in these preclinical studies, what you'll typically do is have cells in culture. So let's say these are cancer cells you're interested in, in maybe killing off, right? So you test all these compounds. You get some promising compounds that show the results that you want. You then can take these cancer cells and, say, inject them into animals. So these could be human cells and create a little tumor site. And then you test out these, uh, <clears throat> these drugs in these animal models, hopefully identify some ones that work very well, right, and then go to clinical trials. Why is this so inefficient? Why do 80 to 95% of new drugs that make it through preclinical pre screening actually fail in humans? And the underlying ideas right now are saying that two-dimensional cell culture assays that are used for the preclinical modeling are not good assays to use. And secondly, animals don't recapitulate the same type of transport and same behavior that humans have. So there's a lot of thinking that animal models are really not very good models to model humans. Instead of using an animal, can we take human cells, create miniature versions of all these organs, put them on a chip, fluidically link them like the human body would be, and start using this for drug screening? Now, this is a long way off. The first example of this is actually being used by a pharmaceutical company in Europe right now, and they're doing a very, t a very simple system to test uh, antithrombosis drugs. All right, so very, very simple. But the idea is, can we take this further? And if you want to take it even one step further, which people are already talking about, is with all of the induced pluripotent stem cell technology that exists, all of the stem cell differentiation knowledge that we have, is you can make a human on a chip for you. Right? So we can take some cells from you, potentially differentiate them into all the cell types we want, create these little organs, have them fluidically connected, and we can do personalized drug screening based on your cells. 